I, I see our first. talked about your experience with men. Um, have you had much experience with women? No. No. Uh -huh. no I, uh, you know, I, I'm really a gay man at heart. <laughs> I really, really am. And I've always been that way. I can't change that. I've always said that if it ever interested me, I would, and it never has. I love men like yourself. <laughs> I loved you the first time I ever met you. Uh oh. You know, I love you and I adore you. I've known you for years. Um, just a question. You actually have a cover, a master's cover. You sell and wear it. Is there a reason? Good question. It's hot. like us 
hopefully in a much better light than they would by watching some movie and thinking, oh, those crazy people. Yes, another question. What would you say is the most important thing that you would say to a new member coming into the community? The most important thing is to learn and to learn from the right people, to learn and to be educated like I was talking about. And don't try to do things that you don't know how to do because you don't want to hurt somebody or hurt you. I remember the first time I tried to use a, a single tail, I about put my eye out. <laughs> but I, I had somebody teaching me. I hate to think what I would have done had I not had somebody teaching me. I think that, and I also think that come in with a service-oriented heart, because I know I did. I just wanted to help and do and be part of. And, and I mentioned in the 80s, I, I came in and I kept my mouth shut. I didn't come in and say, oh, well, I think you ought to do it this way and that way, because especially to the people that were already there working. I, I have a lot of respect, and I still do, for the people that work on things, because they're giving it everything they've got every day of the year, and, and a lot of people just show up here for three days and, you know, have a great time to go home, and that's fine. But a lot of us, this is something we work on every day of the year. So for somebody new, maybe try to think to have an appreciation for that, especially when things go wrong. Um, don't do this all too much because we're really trying. We are. Miss Kendra, yes. I feel privileged to know you. And my question is, within your time in the leather community, what has been the one biggest disappointment for you and how have you grown from that? I think the biggest disappointment for me is when I get blamed for things that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> I, I remember being blamed for something that happened with someone and I wasn't even in the country. <laughs> I was actually, this was like 15 years ago, I was on a cruise, I wasn't even here. And I think that that really hurt for people to, to blame me for something that I didn't have anything to do with. How has it helped me? Um, well, you know the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That, that has helped me learn that I'm not going to please everybody. And I'm good with that. And I'm not going to not go with my gut and my heart and my principles. I'm not going to give those up just because you think I should on something. And I know it's made me stronger. I, I, I have to mention this because I, at International Master Slave maybe 10 years ago, there was some problems, some big problems with some of the producers, not, not myself, I promise. There was some of the producers and some other people and they had this big disagreement and I'll never forget Master Conrad walking up to me and he said, Miss Kendra, we're getting all the elders together in the community to try to resolve this. And I thought, well, great. He goes, well, we're asking you to come in here. And that was the first time I was ever called an elder. It made me feel really old. <laughs> and I thought, oh great, now I get to deal with all these people's problems. <laughs> but that does help you. You can't let something that one or two or three or four people do to you get you down. Good question. Uh-oh. Yeah, you got it, girl. <laughs> One of these days, you're not going to be here, Kendra. You're going to die. I know. Yeah, me too. What do you want the world to know about you, Kendra? What's your legacy? Oh, good one. Well, I hope that GLA will be part of that. I hope that I've made a pretty bold statement that all kinds of people can come together for just a few days and learn a lot from each other. And we don't have to be those people over there or these people over here. I hope that's part of my legacy. And I hope that people know that even if it didn't seem that way at the time, I have always tried to be nice to everybody. Sometimes that's really hard, but I have always tried to do that. So I'd like that to be part of my legacy. 
I know that over the past year that you and I, mostly you, have been dealing with inclusivity and exclusivity. I wonder if you want to be given the opportunity to talk more about those two things that are happening within our lifestyle and our community. Well, I believe in both of them. I believe in exclusivity. I did a speech on this in March in Dallas. I believe that it's okay for we as gay men to have our own space. It is okay, and don't hate us for that. But on the same side of that, it's okay that we come here this weekend and be inclusive. But we don't have to be inclusive every single time for every single thing. It's okay to have both. And I think when people, if you really look at that, it's okay to be exclusive with different groups. There's dominant groups and submissive groups and, and a lot of different things like that, and that's okay. But it's okay for men and women and other groups to have their own event and it be for those people. That's okay. It really is. But it's great for us to come together, too, because we learn a lot. Earlier this week was National Coming Out Day. And with your parents here, I would like to know how it was to come out to your parents as a gangster. As a leather woman, it was very terrifying to come out to my parents. It was many, many years ago, and I remember my mom and dad were probably horrified because I know for a fact that they thought I was joining a motorcycle gang. I remember that conversation at one point, but over the, over the mom, my mom, I, I remember it was my mom or my dad. They said, oh, it's a phase. It'll pass. <laughs> and then I've always laughed about that. Because I thought to myself, well, maybe it will. Maybe it will pass. But it didn't pass. It just actually got stronger for me. When I was three or four or five, there is a video of me. And that's what I used to talk to my parents about. Back, I think it was eight millimeter when we had the, when my dad shaking his head yes. So back when we had eight millimeter, there was a video of me and I'm out in the backyard and I'm holding my teddy bear. I love this teddy bear that my grandma gave me. I had that till I was 16. I kept that teddy bear. So I'm dancing with the teddy bear and I'm telling him I love him. And then I start spanking. <laughs> and it's in the video. So I, you know, and when you're three or four or five, nobody's ever show me that. You don't know that. And I remember thinking, oh, I love Teddy. Bang, bang, bang. You know, I love Teddy. And so I used part of that to talk to my parents that I've always been this way. I just, I never had anybody tell me that. I just had always been that way. And coming out to them was really hard at first. Um, it was very difficult. They thought I was insane, crazy, and that maybe I should go to a mental institution. And I thought maybe too. I didn't know, but we got past all that. And the last many years are wonderful because I don't have to hide anything from them. It's so wonderful. When I, when I got Slave Garrett almost 13 years ago, I talked to them about Slave Garrett and how all of that was going to work. And um, my mom said to me, she asked me, she said, so do I get to tell them what to do? <laughs> They really are. And if I get on to Slave Garrett, my mom gets on to me. <laughs> so if my parents have been married for 50, is it 56? We have to count. 56. 56 years. A long time. And my parents really live the way Garrett and I do. They just call it a little something different. <laughs> So, I'm about seventh generation like me. And I have the video for sale. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question. As a, a little bit more of a younger generation, there's a lot of connectivity with online, being online and FET and things like that. 
a lot of the themes that I see these days is a lot of infighting with some groups sometimes. You get people who have disagreements. What kind of advice would you give to somebody that feels the need to raise their voice all the time over some petty things or even some of the bigger issues? Well, I'll tell you how we handled it at the beginnings of Great Lakes. You really try to bring everybody together, but if you have a certain person that is always going to keep things stirred up, you have to get rid of them. You do. Because if you don't, they will just start to keep them. They will destroy what you're trying to build. And if you're doing things for the right reason, they shouldn't be acting that way. And I know that sounds harsh, but that's, that's the way I feel about it. Because if somebody's going to continually keep things upsetting and not harmony, you have to get rid of them. And I've done that with great lives too. And it's not easy. It's very, very hard to do that. Especially when they're your friend. Good evening. Um, my question is, you've been around for some time now and helped establish a good, strong presence in this community and known throughout this country. Now, there's plenty of other countries in the world that don't have the same rights that we do here. What would be your advice to someone in a different country who wants to go ahead and establish a leather group or some sort of leather contest in a country that may not be the most welcoming? Well, you know, in this country, we started out that way. We weren't the most welcome a long time ago. When I mentioned about how we would all meet together and go as a group, that was for safety. And I know in other countries, I've been to, the, I've been to all the continents, the seven continents, and I know in the Middle East that's a big deal. And I think sometimes maybe if there's a group and you live in a country where it's maybe illegal for you to be like we are, then it's okay to have an underground group. And at least that way you can come together and be together with like-minded people. And you know in America, we've been able to legalize gay marriage, and that was a fight. I never thought I would ever live to see that. I really didn't. When all of that, and that all started, as I remember, in the 80s, when we used to pick at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> but, so I think coming together, even if it's underground, I know in Africa they started uh, an African leather contest, and I don't know how well received that is there, but it has to start somewhere. When we started Great Lakes, there was a lot of people that told us this will never work. It'll never work. You got all these different people coming together, they'll all kill each other. <laughs> I mean, I had that said to me a lot. Nobody's died that I know of. <laughs> I've got a question here. Hello, um, and this is my first GLLA ever, so... Welcome. We're glad to have you. Uh, so my question is related to, like, I'm a newcomer to all of this, um, and while I do hold, like, a small city title, um, one of the things I've encountered is that, like, media and the kink have kind of, like, taken over with the youth, and, like, any of the cool, fun sex stuff that we do is now suddenly, like, open and accessible, as you mentioned. But I've noticed in some spaces that leather history is not touched upon, and, like, the founding members of this community are often ignored or pushed aside, and I was wondering how you would respond to that sort of situation. Well, I was told by a younger group here about 10 years ago that they didn't care of anything I'd done, that, that, that I had never done anything for them personally anyway. Oh. I'm good with that, but that's what they want to believe. I, I think that in our letter world, which is, which is very different from just BDSM, and I, when I say just, I don't mean just, but I mean different, BDSM and kink, and that's okay. Everything's important, but in the leather world that many of us hold very dear to our hearts, there is a hierarchy system, and it's like it is like the military, and I have lo I've always loved that. I I never thought thirty some years ago I'd be sitting up here answering questions like you just asked me. I mean. That it was not anything that I ever thought, oh, one day I want to. I just didn't think about that. I just did. I just did whatever I thought was the right thing to do. And I, I, I think coming in as a new person, 
it's really good to sit down and talk to the elders in a community and learn from them and have, have respect for them. Um, I, ha I have elders that I call upon and ask advice, and I have a lot of respect for what they say. I think we have time for one more. Well, I did have a two-part question, but the first part I already got answered on the lowest part you've been in GLA. What's your highest moment in GLA? In all the 15 years, the highest. Well, I know the high for every year. The high is Saturday night when we announce the winners. And I get to see the faces of the people that have, have won. And they're so excited. And that, that's a big high. And maybe, I don't know if I can choose one thing for all the 15 years, but that moment, knowing that those people's lives are going to change forever, if they want it, if they want it to change.